when you receive your new Amera spreader, it'll come on a flatbed truck. It'll come with the legs, all three sets of chains on each side. So a total of six sets of chains, six turnbuckles, nine shackles, and you will have everything you need to mount this up. The winches will be installed on both sides. All you'll have to do is set your chains up to the length that you need them according to your truck bed. Uh, we found that a lot of truck beds are different. We also supply the mounting locations for the hooks. So we'll supply three sets of hooks for each side. And depending on your model of truck and the way your bed is set up, you may have to do some welding or bolting to all these, just as we've done here. We've welded these hooks on to the outside of the bed, and we bolted these ones on through the backside because we had access to the backside of it. Every truck's different, but we will provide the hardware that you need in order to set this thing up and be successful. We added some hooks here for anchor supports on the Amera spreader. We've got one here leading forward, one leading straight up to hold the Amera patch to the anchor bottom of the truck. Take the tension off of the cables when it's finally mounted. So we'll show you now how easy it is to hook it up with the chains. We'll get it lifted up and then we'll uh, demonstrate showing some stone being spread out. As this thing stands right now, we've got it pinned in to the highest position with these four legs. And then when we hook the Amera spreader up, we'll get it jacked up and supported on the chains and cables, and we'll be able to pull these pins and move these legs straight up out of the way so they're no longer dangling down to the ground. So we'll just take one hook at a time. It just goes right here on the end of the bed. And then this hook comes right back down to a support where there's a shackle on the inside. thing to be tensioned. Throw it in there. Each set of chains has its own turnbuckle for adjusting the tension once you have it set up. Each chain has its own turnbuckle so that you can cinch up everything to make it nice and tight. So you'll see that there's two leads here. One leads forward, this prevents the box from coming back away from the truck. There's another lead that goes up, which prevents the top side of the mirror patcher that's coming underneath here. So this is what the spreader comes up against to stop it from going any further forward. And as we tighten this turnbuckle here, it's gonna lift this front side of the mirror spreader up against the bottom here so it sits flat. So we're gonna wanna bring it up first and then forward as much as possible. them by hand and as I start to get tighter you'll see this ridge start coming up the bottom. Start up tight against the bottom. position we need to be. Hey, looking over there, Dennis. Okay. About a half an inch up. Okay, I'm up against. Okay, now you'll see I'm up against. This leg is now free. This side is up as well.
Well, as you raise the winches up here, it's gonna change the angle of the box. So we won't do any final tensioning until we're in the position that we wanna be. And then we'll bring up the slack on our chains for the ones that support it in the back. We'll tighten all the turnbuckles up here. And once it's nice and tight with no slack in them, you're good to go. And there'll be no moving back and forth or side to side. And it'll be like one secure unit. So you can leave the legs right in because they raise up and pin into position. And they will not interfere with any of the moving up and down, back and forth, because it's just like one singular unit. Very simple to pull the pin, bring it up to its highest position. Good, Dennis. I'm very critical when I do this, so I like the wire to be nice and straight and coiled up perfectly. A little bit of my OCD kicking in, but it makes everything nice and neat. Slide that over, and then just begin winding up your winch, winding up your winch here. And you'll see the angle of the Amera spreader itself is going to change. So you can dump this from any angle; it will not affect the way that the stone falls out of the box. I like it to look flat. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is raise this up on an angle right now because the bed is flat. So as we raise the bed up, the bottom of the Amera spreader is gonna be parallel flat with the ground. Now we'll come up at the same time. And like I said, we're going to go way up so that this thing is angled up towards the dump body. And when we go to dump the stone into the box, it'll be flat and we'll be able to dump nice and smooth. This is also a good transport position because going up on the angle makes it so you can still see the taillights on the truck. Absolutely recommend that there be tail lights that are visible above the rear bumper as well so that you can see on the sides turn signals and running lights just like this truck has the lights built into the tailgate here on the back side okay now this looks like a very steep awkward angle as I stated this is angled up because when we lift the bed it's gonna come flat to the ground Okay, now we're going to go ahead and secure this by moving our chain links up. And we're going to tighten those turnbuckles. Same thing with this one here. This one will always stay tight because it's what's keeping it up against the bottom of the truck. This one came in a little bit because of the angle of it. So the dump truck, being that this is a, a unit that is only attached to the bed, it's designed to stay away from the frame of the truck. So even when we lift the bed all the way up, it's gonna clear on the bottom and it will never hit the truck until it gets all the way to the tippy tippy top. Everything comes flat right up against the back side of the bumper. And as I said, these chains here are the main supports for the back side of the, pack, uh, the spreader so that all the weight doesn't remain on the cables. 
Uh, it's very clear in the manual that we don't want to have all the weight on the cables alone. So what we'll do is we'll actually take these up till they're tight and you'll see that slack start going into the cables and that takes the pressure off of them. So now these are loose, chains tight, tighten them up a little bit more. Tight, tight, tight. Now we've got one solid unit. Put a little bit more on this one here. Just double check everything here. Tight, tight. One more to tighten up over here to make sure everything's still tight for a final inspection before you start dumping anything into the box. Now we're good and tight, we're good and tight, we're good and tight. And if you come look underneath here, you'll see that everything is secured and up against all of the brackets that we put in. I'm actually gonna bring this one up a little bit so that it comes up against this gap. tight and secure this doesn't go anywhere <coughs> we're ready to release our pins on our dump body and we can make passes with the spreader so what we're going to want to do is open up our gate openings prior to putting stone into the box and you don't get anything out of the box until you pull the main lever which is here so this is what actually opens it. There's different holes for different settings to how big of the opening you want. So you can pull that that way on the other side here. And it comes with two pins, you just misplaced one. So once you get it to the opening that you want, pin it. This is the discharge chute. Open, and it's all the way closed. And we're back open and I'll pin it into position. Okay. And we're open. Length. Then you'll see these bars here. These are for cutoffs. So we can actually split the sides of the box where we want material to come out. So if you want to isolate this side only, we'll have these levers open. We'll close these ones over here. And then we will only get material coming out of this side of the box. Maybe if you need to do a sidewalk or you only need to do a four foot section. These are split off and isolated by one foot sections. Now as you can see, we could go from multiple different positions. We could spread from the center. We could spread from the side. There's multiple configurations to get you exactly where you need to be. and the operator. The operator should be keeping an eye on the amount of material left in the truck and uh, before you finish a pass you want to know that you've got enough uh, before you start or finish a pass and then just go ahead and get refilled and then come back and finish your stone laying. You want to make sure that you're pinned in for transport so this is all the way in the closed position. We pin it in, we lock it in. Now we're back in the shop and we're going to start taking the Amer spreader off of the dump truck. It's a very simple process as well. What you're going to do is take the slack up out of your cables. So now that the cables are taken up, all the pressure is going to be off the chain. You can see them starting to slack out. Once you get sufficient slack in the chain, you're going to go right up on top and move these chains back so that you have enough length to 
come all the way down to the ground. I usually leave three, you know you have enough. You can do the same thing on the other side. Now we're able to start coming down. Sorry, we gotta take our legs and bring them down so we have something to stand up. Let's lower the legs, Dennis. Don't forget that. All the way to the highest position, right where we got it from originally. that go up and hold the spreader to the bottom of the box. You see we're off the ground by about two inches, three inches here on the side. Once we loosen these turnbuckles, everything's gonna come flat down. You see it starts coming away from the box here. Everything's now coming down to the ground and we'll be able to disattach it. need support in any way we're available we're always able to take a call and give you feedback instructional installation instructions anything we can do to help you guys get these things set up we're here hey welcome back and thank you for in I'm Tim Martino I'm here with pavement group no no yes do it again okay Ready? Hi, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back. My name is Tim Martino, Parts and Service Manager for Pavement Group. And today we are going to show you how to install. What are we doing? What are we doing? Setting it up? What, what is it? You still filming? Okay. We're going to show you how to set it up. We're going to show you how to hook it up to the truck in a few simple steps. So quick and easy. You'll see. I'm just going to go through it here. Dennis over here is my partner. He's going to do the other side while I do this side. So it's going to be symmetrical, both sides. You can see the view from here. Rest assured, it's going to be done the same on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our hooks onto the truck. And they're going to go right onto the bed. Hooks right up to the top. 
We're going to pull our slack out of our winch here and make sure that it's all nicely wound up or unwound. Just enough to get to the shackle here. This is for lifting purposes only. We have safety chains here on the outside which hold the back side of the Ameristretter up to the truck. So we will put these in place and as we bring the winches up we'll adjust these afterwards to hold the weight of the load. We will never put the whole full weight of the load on these cables. Uh, that's just another safety feature that we have. We're always worried about safety here and you never want to drive down the road with these cables holding the full weight of the load of this thing. We've got safety chains and we've got cables. <laughs> the next thing we'll do is we'll run the rest of our turnbuckles and our chains. So we've got a longer turnbuckle here that goes on the front hook. This brings the Amera spreader up to the back side of the truck where we've installed mounting points down here on the bottom so that it can't go any further up. So that'll suck. It'll rest against there. Then we have a secondary turnbuckle and shackle and chain to bring the spreader up off the ground and rest it up against the bottom of the truck. This ensures that this is one solid unit. It's almost like a tugboat and a barge being combined and it doesn't go anywhere. It's solitary, connected to the bed only. So there's no parts of the frame that are gonna be rubbing or touching as you bring the bed up or tilt it down. It's just gonna be one solid unit. Hey buddy, I got you. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead bring the turnbuckles up front, up first. So we're gonna raise this up to the bottom of the bucket for the truck bed. We want it to come up against. We've already seen that we've butted the back side of the pack of the spreader up against these. Okay, now we're gonna raise it up so that we close this gap and it's up against the bottom of the bottom. We do that by turning these turnbuckles here. This is also gonna raise the legs right up off of the ground so we can put those in the storage position. Started off by hand. It's a 7 8 inch hex head for a wrench. Uh, I like to just stick the wrench in the middle here in the turnbuckle and then slide it back and forth and turn it. It makes it very easy to turn this turnbuckle up. Sure these are nice and clean, winding up evenly. Don't want to get any tangles or bird's nest in there. This will also make sure that your cables don't get frayed or messed up. So if they're in a nice straight line like that, you know you're in business. This is going to raise the rear of this 
up, it's going to cause a little bit of slack in those forward leading shackles. Once we get it in the position where we need it, we will adjust the chains on the back side that are holding it up for support. And we'll make sure all the shackles are nice and tight. And it's ready to drive down the road or hold stone. buckles later, so I'll put the legs up last. check and triple check all of our connectors, our shackles, our chains, all our nuts and bolts on our turnbuckles to ensure that everything is secure before we take it down the road. Tight, tight, we've got nuts and bolts here. We want to make sure those are secure. Nut and bolt here, make sure that's secure. We have a shackle buck right here. We want to make sure that's secure. Another shackle with a nut, nut and bolt for the turnbuckle, nut and bolt for the turnbuckle. Uh, another set here, shackle nut, or I'm sorry, turnbuckle nut and bolt, turnbuckle nut and bolt. Same thing on the other side. All of our tensions on the, on the chain, not the cables. Keep things tight. Same thing over here. Loose cable, tight turnbuckle. We're going to check our shackle nut, that is tight. Turnbuckle nut and bolt, turnbuckle nut and bolt, shackle nut and bolt, turnbuckle nut and bolt, sorry, here's the shackle nut and bolt, another one here, turnbuckle nut and bolt, ah, now see what we found here, this is not good, we have a bolt that has come loose from the nut, right here on this shack turnbuckle, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a new lock nut on there with a little bit of thread lock, and then we'll be fine, hey, Okay. Get lock up and install it. Alright. 
it could have been catastrophic. But that's why we double and triple check everything, right? Safety, safety. get a lock nut, install that on there, we'll be good to go. Already, uh, 12 minutes is what it took. Yeah? It's not bad. Yeah. What did I say, 15? 15? Yeah. And you can mention that. So it took uh, a total of 12 minutes for the two of us to hook this up to the truck. Uh, for that amount of time in the morning, come, you can do it while you're warming the truck up. <laughs> you might want to put lock nuts on all these. Like, like Dennis said the other day, that's what we should do. It's very important to keep in mind that if you're going to go buy replacement parts off the shelf, such as the turnbuckle or anything, these do not come stock with a locking nut for the outside. And as we saw in the video before, uh, it just is a risk of those nuts coming off of the bolt. So we're going to add our own lock nuts, nylon lock nut, to make sure that those are secure. We're always going to check them anyway for a safety standpoint, but having the lock nut on there is going to ensure that you have less of a chance of that nut coming undone while it's attached to the turnbuckle and the chain.
What's that? It came down. Okay. You want me to go back? We're going to respray it. Cover this up. There's no oil there. There's no oil there. 